Hey, good evening again. It's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. I'm making a what should be a short video tonight on something you may see over my left shoulder here. It's this thing here, a little sort of reddish or orangish outgrowth from one of my roses, and it's a rose gall, or uh, it's the product of the rose gall wasp. This rose itself is Rosa rubrifolia, or Rosa glauca. I'm not quite sure which one is the current scientific name, but people use both. And what happens is this rose is a little bit susceptible to a particular wasp that burrows into one of the buds, and then you see this growth here. And I'm actually going to have to take some close-up footage so you can see how incredible this thing is. It's, a, it's astounding. Another name for it, it's been around for a long time, obviously, and people noticed it way back when. So in English folklore, this is called a Robin's pin cushion, uh, after Robin Goodfellow, a sprite that shows up in English culture. Uh, also shows up in Midsummer's Night's Dream as the character Puck. So there's a little bit of trivia for you. Um, now the rose gall wasp lays an egg, or a, a series of eggs, into the rose itself, and this outgrowth is a hormonal thing that happens as a defense mechanism for those larvae. So it actually begins growing out with this weird abnormal hairy mossy growth that has these complex colors between red and orange uh, coming from the tissue of the rose itself. So that is actually the rose growing that hairy mechanism to protect the gall wasp. Um, now the gall wasp itself is relatively innocuous. It doesn't do that much to your rose except for this. Uh, the the growth, growth itself doesn't harm the plant in any particular way, or at least not that, that we know of. It does sometimes show up on uh, more, more prominently on sick or unhealthy plants, so that may give the impression that it's harming the plant, but there's never been much evidence that it harms the plant. Uh, inside of it, of course, should be the larvae of the rose gall wasp, and just for fun I might crack one of those out of here and uh, show you, if I can, what's inside of it. Okay, here for the close-up shot. This is the rose gall wasp. Just, you can get a really good look at all the complex hairy coloring on that thing there. And it appears to be where the flower bud should be emerging. So I'm going to tear that open in just a second to see what that's like. But the donor rose, in this case, and a rose that seems to be fairly susceptible to it, is Rosa rubrifolia. And it's a lovely rose. They also, I mentioned they also call it Rosa glauca. Glauca means that it has a glaucous or bluish coating on the leaves. And rubrifolia means that it has reddish leaves. And you think those two things are kind of contradictory, but in this case, I think both describe different aspects of the rose, but a beautiful landscape rose, species rose, and uh, this is the rose gall wasp. So I'm going to see what I can see. Granted, this is an early stage of development of the rose gall wasp, so I'm going to see what I can figure out from what's inside there. Just trying to bisect it here. and. From that, I can see here, and I'm hoping you can see as well, that this appears to be the intact parts of a rose flower. It's got petals right up there. It's got stamens. That's the inside portion of the flower. And somewhere in here, very likely in a way that I can't see, there is the laid egg of the rose gall wasp. So that's what it looks like. And I wanted to show you one other thing here just while I'm doing show and tell, is that this is from a different rose. This is from Rosa eglantaria, or the sweet briar rose. And this is the rose gall wasp, or the gall, after a year. This is the following spring, and it's hardened that hair is all hardened off, and you can see on here, right up on this edge here, that that hole there, I believe that's where the wasp larvae developed inside the rose over the course of a year, and then emerged in the spring. So that's the complete life cycle. As I say, it does no major harm to your roses. It is an interesting oddity in your garden, and some roses are way more susceptible, including this one, Rosa rubrifolia, and the Sweet Briar Rose. Okay, stick around here. 
bonus footage. Since this is a short video, I'm going to show you a couple things blooming in my yard. Okay, going handheld here, so I apologize for any shakiness. But I thought you might like to see a couple of roses in the landscape. This one is Seven Sisters. Supposedly called so because it emerges as a deep pink and then fades through other colors. And I'll show you on this one here. So you'll get a lot of different shades of pink on the same rose. And I do apologize, I haven't done a lot of weeding yet this spring, so if you notice anything in the background, I'll ask you to withhold your comments, please. So that's Seven Sisters. And of course, Eden Climber, or Pierre de Ronsard. And I've trained my climbers sort of horizontally onto a low fence here, just to get best effect of them, I think. And this one is Heaven's Eye, a Geshwind Rambler, and if you look why it's called Heaven's Eye, is supposed to be because it has a darker pink center with the outer ring being quite pale, as you can see clearly on that one. And of course, a Buff Beauty, at its buffest, most beautiful. Look at that display of color there. That is just gorgeous. And again, trained rather horizontal to just spill all over the place. And on the far end of this fence line, the irrepressible Rosarium Uderson, with a color that I've never quite adequately been able to describe. It is a pink, but it sort of has undertones of salmon or silvery or something that uh, never photographs real well. But in person, it's a knockout. And before I sign off, souvenir to Dr. Germain with just a gorgeous scent and excellent color. And in behind it, Rosa Moesii which is buzzing up above me here. Oh, there's another souvenir to Dr. Germain, if we will focus. Unbelievable. Further to the right here, Commandant Beau Repair. The oh-so-recognizable flowers of Charles de Mills. And there's Lita towering overhead. All right. Well, that's kind of how my rose garden looks today. Thanks for sticking it out with me. Giseline de Felagond to sign off. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave those below the video.